Hi everyone, my name is Greg Knox. I'm the Executive Director of Skeena Wild Conservation Trust and this is a fisheries update for the Skeena for uh, September 20th, 2023. And uh, in this video I'll be talking about a summary of the returns we've seen with the different salmon species. Uh, I'll be talking about environmental conditions we've been seeing and also uh, diving more into steelhead because I know a lot of people have been asking questions about steelhead this year. Um, so the information I'll be providing is from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, from the province of British Columbia who manages steelhead, and then First Nations fisheries programs throughout the Skeena. They do a lot of work in, in the watershed uh, counting fish and, and doing analysis. So I'll, I'll start with environmental conditions. So we've recently had about two and a half years of cooler ocean temperatures in the North Pacific where our salmon go to feed and grow. Uh, this is good for our salmon because it generally means more food for them, for them and the fish they eat. Uh, however, uh, this spring we've been uh, seeing that the cool phase has now flipped into a really warm phase. This is called an El Nino event. So in, in the future, this could be uh, really challenging for our salmon. And so uh, these warmer temperatures we've been seeing in, in the North Pacific also bring uh, warmer temperatures and drier conditions to our river systems and lake systems. And so this year in the Skeena, we've been seeing uh, at or near uh, historic lows in the Skeena itself and many of its tributaries. We've been seeing some really warm temperatures in some tributaries like the Babine. So this is all concerning for our fish returning this year. So for returns this year, uh, for Skeena Sockeye, uh, the return is about 1.6 million. This is below the long-term average of about two and a half million. And DFO's preseason forecast uh, was about two for about 2.8 million. So a lot less fish than we expected this year for Sockeye. Uh, for Skeena Chinook, there's been ongoing low returns for the last 10 years. Uh, this year's return is probably in the 25 to 30,000 range, although we won't have an, an estimate from DFO until, uh, until December. And this is well below the long-term average of kind of 80 to 120,000 Chinook into the Skeena. For Coho, we've been seeing really strong returns this year. It's been a really good news story. Well above the long-term average, uh, about double the 10-year average for coho. Lots of nice, big, healthy fish, so it's great to see. Uh, for pink, we've also been seeing a really strong return this year, which is great. Those fish uh, obviously feed people, but also the system, so it's nice to see all those pinks returning. And for Skeena Chum, uh, they have been severely depressed for, for several decades now, uh, but this year we've seen uh, about double the 10-year average coming of, of Skeena Chum coming into the system. So that's good news, better than, better than it, it has been. Um, nice to see those Chum in the rivers. Uh, next up, I'll dive into steelhead. So Skeena steelhead, the current estimate by the province using the Thai test fishery is about 10,000 return. Uh, this, that's less than half the 10 year average and other indicators like the Sustat Weir in the Upper Skeena and Witsat Mark Recapture Program uh, are consistent. They're showing low returns as well. And, and just what I'm hearing from what people are catching, it's, it's not easy to catch steelhead this year. And this is this 10,000 estimate is just about the 8,000 extreme conservation goal set by the province. Uh, and in addition to that, water levels uh, may be increasing uh, the catchability and stress on these fish because they've been so low so far until now this, this season. Uh, there has been a very large Alaskan interception this year. They've had really aggressive fisheries in Southeast Alaska, especially on the outer coast of Southeast Alaska, where a lot of our fish migrate past to get to the Skeena Nass and other systems. And so that, that uh, looks like it could be around 40% exploitation rates on Skeena steelhead. So big, big impact. And then there, there were significant commercial fisheries at the mouth of the Skeena this year, uh, which also impact our steelhead. Um, they did close on, on August 2nd. So uh, 
you know, most of our steelhead migrate from kind of late July through the middle of August. So a good chunk of the run wouldn't have been impacted by those commercial fisheries. And then there's also, of course, First Nations food fisheries, illegal fisheries taking place, and then sport fisheries. And these are all impacting the low return we're seeing this year. So all, all need to be considered. Um, and we uh, did some work with Fish First, Fish First Consulting and Watershed Watch to put together a run reconstruction of what our estimates of, uh, of mortality from each of the fisheries from Alaska through into the river are for Skeena Steelhead this year. And we'll provide that here. Uh, take a look at that table. You'll, you'll get an understanding of how things add up and, and where the impacts are in the different fisheries. So because of all this, we're asking the provincial government for additional management actions this year. And we're also ramping up our Alaska campaign because you know, without Alaska's help, we can't rebuild uh, Skeena Steelhead and many of our North and Central Coast salmon populations. So a big problem that, that we, need to, uh, we need to get on top of. So I'll provide some links to take action, encourage people to, to write letters, contact both the province, DFO, and uh, the, the certification bodies that uh, certify Alaskan seafood as sustainable. And the other thing is we're really interested in what people are seeing out there. Uh, you guys are eyes and ears on the ground. So love talking to people, love receiving information. Please provide your, your comments in, 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 the, in the comment section in this video or uh, contact us at info at skeenwild.org and we'll be happy to uh, get your thoughts and answer any questions. Thank you.